Tony from CassetteComeback.com and in today's video I'm going to be looking at some cassettes which are at least pretty common here in the UK and I think in Europe maybe not so much outside but I think they're well worth a look at because they really do offer great value for money. And what are these? Well, they are the Philips CD1 and the Philips CD Extra. Now, I've already done a video on some earlier Philips cassettes and uh, there's a link to it right here. Bing! Uh, and these are 1980s Philips that are in that video and if you watch it you'll see they're very quiet, they sound very good, but my goodness, they are probably the hardest cassettes to calibrate and bias up properly out of the lot. So, what are these? Are these the same sort of deal? Well, if you think about it, Philips were the creator of the compact cassettes. But, along with that, Chrome was developed by DuPont. And Philips and DuPont... We're in bed for a long time. I mean, near where I grew up in the town of Blackburn in Lancashire, there was a massive Philips DuPont optical factory. I remember it, beautiful glass building. It was like glass and yellow and blue. And that was one of the biggest CD plants in Europe. And um, we have the X Factor over here. And I always remember back in, ooh, we've got about 15 years now, where Andy Pieces was there in the Philips DuPont optical plant, turning on the new CD to be pressed for the winner of the X Factor. Unfortunately, that place is now gone. But DuPont, DuPont, I should say, developed the chrome pigment. It wasn't BASF like a lot of people think. It was DuPont. And it makes sense. You know, DuPont also created Teflon. And they also created nylon as well. So, you know, chemicals are what DuPont did. And they had a, a partnership with Philips. So... Back in 85 with the other UC2 and MC2 cassettes, you could say that they were probably made by DuPont. But at this point, this is the mid to late 90s, these aren't. And I'll show you what I mean. Here is a PDM, Philips DuPont Media, pure chrome CDX cassette from around the same time, around 1995. Yeah, this isn't the same as this or this. But anyhow... Let's open these up and we can have a good look at them. So, um, you know something, one day I will bring a knife with me, I will remember. But then again, you don't want knives in videos because you have a knife in a video and YouTube might uh, might censor it, you know. So, uh, let's just do it the old fashioned way with Mr. Fingernails, which is doing me no favours whatsoever right now. These are proper si tightly signed. I mean, just as I'm looking here, and it seems a bit sad, but sometimes on the open tear you can see who made the actual cassettes. It's sometimes quite obvious just by the design of the font there. Um, these ones, it's not. But there's a reason for that, because at least with the CD1, which is the Type 1 of this cassette, which is this one, if you look, there are several variations of this made by several people in several shells with different hubs now i was doing some research some of these were just in generic chinese hubs and could have had australian tape in them by someone called green corp that is someone to be fair i've never heard of um some of these you know a basf which is what i think this is this i think is a basf the hubs if we look at the hubs they kind of look basfe Apart from, if you look, there's this just little bit there where there's it's not straight, the sort of angle. They look like classic BASF hubs, but they might be. I'm, I'm guessing these are going to be BASF. Looking at the shell, but it's screw shell, this. It's not a welded shell, but it's a decent shell. And the tape itself has got a nice pack on it. That, that really means something to me. When I see tape packs that are nice and flush and shiny... It says to me quality equipment's been used here, whereas, you know, if you've got it all bumpy and lumpy like Chinese cassettes, then it says a lot as well. So, this is a basic entry-level Type 1 from Philips. But, again, I think this is a BASF, and likewise with this. Now, the shell, as we can see, it's different shells. Same generation, same outer wrappers, but the shells are different. If you look, this one is a ridged shell, 
this one isn't that's flat the the, the two different shells there um, the hubs are the same however but uh, these are slightly yellower which I don't know whether that's got to do with the tape formulation let's have a sniff oh yeah yep that's got the whiny 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 mmm that's got the waxy crayony smell so this one smells like a pure chrome which makes me think pure chrome at this time there's gonna be really two manufacturers BASF or SKC now go back to the PDM if we look at the PDM of the same time period and this is a pure chrome this here if you if we look at the the hubs the hubs are different between these this is sort of like just a just a carved out hub that looks sort of BASF but not quite certainly Voice of Lovers Moon King good album but if we look at the CD1 again the shell isn't the same it's a different shell again it doesn't have this sort of frosted bit at the top so a bit of research says that this PDM CDX at this time PDM magnet um, was actually owned by an East German company that was called Dessauer Magnet Band and they're someone that I've not really come across really but they've been cropping up more and Dessauer Magnet Band an East German company because even though East German cassettes were made and a lot of people say they're not great quality a lot of it was based on either AGFA or BASF formulations and then of course BASF by 1995 had taken over AGFA so chances are the pure chrome tape in these are BASF because they they actually are really good tapes these CDX they look a bit lower end I don't like this red bit here because every time I see it from the corner of my eye, it's almost like I've got a cassette with a red leader and it's not wound properly and the leader's spooling round inside the tape, but it's not. It's actually printed on. But these are very good pure chromes, but they are different from the Philips. So like I say, Dessauer Magnet Band, which was an East German company, had taken over and started making PDM by then, but probably using BASF tape. And likewise, these ones... The hubs, the smell, I'm going to guess this is BASF as well. So, there we go. That's the breakdown of them two. But as always, the best way to see if these are worth your time and your money is to start recording on them. Okay, so I'm going to use the Dragon on this one. Uh, I guess it gets a bit boring now because I'm using the Dragon all the time, but uh, it does such a good job. What do you want from me? Now, I was talking about the PDM tapes and it's got me thinking, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to see if these PDMs do have the same BASF taping just nailed together by someone different. So, test tones come in. I'm going to calibrate this up and uh, let's have a see what the levels are. So, test tones come in now, but I, I will mute the volume in the video. interesting okay so now what's interesting about that is that the tape i just recorded before in this deck and calibrated up was the socky mag that i did a video on uh it seems very similar to that socky mag which i believe was a cobalt doped chrome so this could have this pdm looking at it this has got the uh the cobalt doped chrome tape like in the likes of the atr and the Socky Mag, which I did my last video on. So let's see if this Philips CD Extra bias is just the same. So test tones coming. Here they go. No. Can you see? This is about 5 dB down from that one. Let's have a see if the bias is any similar. No, you see that the bias is low again. So I'm concluding at this point that this doesn't have the same taping as the PDM. In fact, let's just bias this up properly.
Hmm. Okay, that's biased up now. So, the conclusion there is that the PDM probably has the same cobalt doped type 2 in as the ATR and that Saki mag I did the video on, whereas this Philips CD Extra is behaving like a pure chrome. I don't think there's any cobalt doping at all in this because it's minus 5 uh, on the on the level and it needs a lot more negative bias. So it's performing like an old school Philips tape <laughs> or an old school BASF, something that isn't double coated, something like the uh, the Extra, the Chrome Extra. That that sort of yeah, it sort of seems it might be that. But anyway, the important part is is how it sounds. So let's put some music through this. This is another one from the YouTube Audio Free Library. This is called Inevitable. Let's have a listen and try and pay attention to how much hiss comes out of this because I think this is going to be pretty low hiss. So, yeah, I don't know about you, but uh, like, like the other Philips crumbs I've been working on, these are not easy to bias up. You need to have a deck where you've got manual calibration facilities, but when you do, there was a lot of bass in this, the treble was nice and clear. Of course, keep it to recording at 0 dB or less, but this sounds really good and low hiss, very, very good. So I wonder how now the CD1 ferret's going to sound. Now I'm guessing this is going to be similar to a Ferro Extra. But let's put my EQ back to 70. Let's select this. Test tone's coming. I'm just going to bias this up now. When I've actually got some tape to bias it on. Okay, that'll do. Right, let's listen to some more of Inevitable. A lot more hiss now. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to decrease the output. But I'm now going to increase the level. We'll turn this up to plus three. Plus four.
yeah, I mean, obviously it had more hiss than a pure chrome did. I mean, it's very, very dark tape, this. I don't think it's cobalt doped. I didn't want to push it any further. But as an entry level, fairly common, fairly cheap cassette in Europe, yeah, sounded pretty good to me. So there you go. Cassettes from the creator of the compact cassette. Yeah, not very consistent in where they're made or how they're made, but uh, these two at least are very good, I think. I mean, the CD1, like I just said, unspectacular, but a very decent, nicely made, very dark taped, tight one, available at least in near you at a very reasonable price. CD extra, I can smell it from here. This seems to be an old school, pure chrome, no cobalt doping, low hiss, keep it below zero dB, sounds fabulous. But you've got to have a deck that you can dial this in on properly. And I'll be honest with you, the Dragon can pretty much dial in anything. But my Iowa, which I use in a lot of videos, couldn't dial this one in properly. Could get the biasing right, but I couldn't get the levels up to match. So this really is an old school pure chrome, but if your deck can handle it, hmm, sounds great. And I have these both for sale, obviously, in my web store. And these, like I say, very good value for money. Uh, I, like I say, it's, it, they're just very nice tapes. And especially if you're not in Europe, um, you know, Philips tapes have that little bit of cachet because I don't think the latest stuff really made it that far across the pond. But if you're looking for something that's value for money, records great and has a bit of cachet with the creator of compact cassette name on it, you can do a lot worse than either of these. So that was a little short one for you today. So please do enjoy and keep on taping. Bye bye.